come to repentance. Our brothers got to realize they're the mightiest thing that God put on this earth. And it's time for us to leave. take a soul, stand fast in the faith. People need me, so I can't fall. We're trying to elevate Enoch or Elijah or the Messiah. Keeping commandments, not try even fire. You filthy if you full of sin. The kingdom you won't enter in. Such a bloody scene, why she making clean? For the husband come to clean. These what women I'm are saying, tired of eating. Rest, so I'll make it plain. Messiah coming only for the elect. You better walk circumspect on the highways and hedges. Purge in that spiritual house of all heaven. Charge of a prophet. They think they're tired, prophet. they are the tired. Brothers, Charge where you at? Of a prophet. Charge of a prophet. Gotta say the lost soul. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. What time is it? What time? We're gonna, we gonna go through the Bible and show you why in our communities the Bible is not practiced, it's not applied. Read what you got. <clears throat> this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 1. Bring it out! Awake! Awake! Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem! The holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee, the uncircumcised and the unclean. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. So the, uh, so the instructions that we are getting in the Bible is to awake, awake. This is a call to the Israelites. It says, awake, awake, put on thy strength. What is our strength? Our strength is the commandment. Because when we keep the commandment, the Most High has our back. Most High so will stand and fight with us. Bring it out. So it says, awake, awake. Awake from what? Awake from the gang bang, the drug dealing, the shooting, the killing, right. the idolatry. Idolatry is going to the Christian church on Sunday. That's right. Because you're worshiping a false god. Right. Going to the nation of Islam. That's a false god. And all the different religions that our people are caught up in, that's what we are being called to awake from. Awake from those things. Because in Christianity, Christianity is filled with hypocrisy. That's right. They say, tell us to keep the Bible, but they don't do nothing that the Bible say. Right. Read on. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. So it says, put on thy beautiful garments. Put on thy strength, which is God's commandments. O Zion. Zion, Zion is just another term for us Israelites which are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right, read on. You understand? Read on. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee, the uncircumcised and the unclean. So it's telling us to, to wake up, and that says there shall no more come into us, the uncircumcised and the unclean. The uncircumcised are the, the sinners among our nations. Do you know what sin is, sister? Right, those are sins. Sins are murder, rape. Those are sins. But what is the definition of sin? Because when the Bible says that the, uns the uncircumcised and the unclean will not come in any longer, it's talking about those that are in the midst of sin. Those are consumed with their sin. That's all they think about. Read what you got. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out! Whosoever committed sin, transgression also the law for sin is the transgression of the law how you doing brother what's your name wow uh, okay read it read it again whosoever committed sin transgression also the law so it says whosoever of the children of israel transgressed the law they are in the midst of sin those are the sinners those that break god's rules are the sinners of our people. That's Read on. Right. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the definition of sin is those that break God's commandment. You understand? Now go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse one. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. So it says awake, awake, and put on thy strength. 
What is our strength? The strength for men is us starting to grow our beards. Stop saving our beards, balls. Stop me, older men, stop saving your heads completely off. Our younger men, stop gangbanging. Come together in the unity of the law, of God's law. Those, that's what it means when it says awake, awake and put on your strength. It's talking about repentance, us getting up and starting back to keep God's commandments. Not just reading it or having the Bible in your dashboard or in the back window of your car or on your bookshelf. No, pick it up and actually read it to apply it. That's right. Read on. Give me one or two. Give me one more. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. So it says, notice it says, Jerusalem is the holy city. Jerusalem is the holy city. That's the city that we are from. We are from Jerusalem. That's our homeland. Read on. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. So it says, shake thyself from the dust. The dust is just the same as I mentioned before. The dust is the different philosophies that we've learned here in America. Christianity, Islam. Even Hindu and be voodoo, all the stuff that we've learned here in, in Babylon the Great, which is America, it says, shake the dust. That's it, that's dust. Those things are meaningless. We have we will not get the kingdom by following after those things. Read on. Teach up O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So this is one of the laws that we must keep in doing that. You keep your ears open since I got with you. I'm reading something for you. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Read out! A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So this is some of the dust that our sisters have to shake off. Read it again so we can get some understanding. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says that a woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Right. What is it that pertains unto a man? Teach. Read on. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give some understanding. Let's read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So now the Bible says a man shouldn't put on a woman's garment. So a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man, and a man shouldn't put on a woman's garment. What is a woman's garment? A dress. Teach. Skirt. Right. Those are things that we can evidently see. That those are garments that men should not be wearing that are classified for women. Right. So now read it again from the top. Ring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. So now that we know that this is talking about clothing or garments, it lets us know clearly that when the Bible says that the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, it's talking about pants. That's right. Our sisters would, are not to be wearing pants. That's right. They were not designed for women. Because when you go, and you can see that evidently when you go to the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, what you see? On a women's bathroom, there's a woman with a dress on. Teach. On a men's bathroom, there's a man with pants. Right. So why is it okay in our society for women to wear pants and dresses. Bring it out! That's not right. That's not according to God's commandments. That's right. That's right! You understand? Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a woman, a man should not wear dresses and skirts, and a woman should not wear pants, because they were designed for men. Bring it out. Read on. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So all that do this are abomination to the Lord God. Give me Zephaniah 1 and 8. All the, all the men that wear dresses and skirts are abomination, meaning they are utterly disgusting to the Most High God. Right. Women that's wearing pants is disgusting to the Most High God. It's not pleasing in His sight. So if you are in the Christian church and you say you follow in the Bible, you 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 saying that you follow the, the commandments and you do what the Bible say, if you got on pants, no, you're not. You are in transgression of God's laws. That's right. Read what you got. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter one and verse eight. Read it out. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice 
So it says it shall come to pass, meaning this is something that's going to happen in the future, in the time to come. It says in the, it, it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is when he, he brings forth judgment on all the nations that have done us wrong, put us in captivity, and also on, the, on those of us that are not keeping his commandments. That's right. Please it in his sight. Read on. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. So it says he will punish the princes and the king's children. He's going to punish us for our sins in that day. Read on. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So he says all such that are clothed with strange apparel. That's right. Strange apparel is the woman that that the woman that's wearing pants. Bring it out. The woman is dressed immodest. Bring it out. That's showing her thighs, showing her, her cleavage, showing her camel toe. That's strange apparel to the most high. Right. right. It's not pleasing in his sight. Read on. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So those of, those of our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are you Israelites? That's right. You are a woman wearing pants. Today is the day that you stop wearing pants because God's laws is against that. That's and if you love the most high, you're going to apply his commandments. That's right. So men wearing dresses and skirts is an abomination before the Lord God. You have to get in line, get in tune with the Bible. Get in tune with what God commands you to do. That's right. Stop following after your pastor that's not giving you with no understanding of the scripture. Jeez. Read what you got. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 9. Bring it out. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the Bible says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall inherit the kingdom of God. Let's, let's get what righteous is. Because the Bible says that the unrighteous is not going to get the kingdom of God. So to fully understand that, we got to understand what righteous is. What is righteous according to the Bible? What is righteous? Read what you got. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. Read it out! And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. And it shall be our righteousness so the Bible is giving us a definition here. It says, it shall be our righteousness. See, read that again. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us. So the righteousness that we are supposed to be walking in is keeping God's commandments. That's right. Come on, brother. You got a moment? So the, the righteousness that we are supposed to be doing is keeping God's commandments. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Read it again. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Bring it out. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you are not keeping God's commandments, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are not keeping the Sabbath day holy, you will not get the kingdom of God. Right. right. If you are not doing these things, you will not get the kingdom of God. Let's go through the list of these things. These specific sins that will disqualify you from getting the kingdom. From et inheriting eternal life. Read what you got. Be not deceived. So notice it says, don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. Don't be tricked. Because many of us have are in the Christian church or, or we have been to the Christian church. And in the Christian church, they tell us that we God's laws are done away with. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta follow the laws that the, in the old testament. Christ did away with that. We under grace. That's not in the Bible. Right. That's a perverse twisting of the scriptures. That's right. Because right now we read in the New Testament and it's telling us clearly that these people with these certain sins, you're doing these certain sins, you will not get the kingdom of God. Read. Teach. Be not deceived. Not the fornicators. No fornicators. So if you got one, two, three, four side chicks, 
You ain't got a wife, you ain't, you ain't married, you, you sleeping around with the woman after woman, you dealing with thoughts, you dealing with, you got this side chick here, you a fornicator, you won't get the kingdom of God. That's right! A fornicator is any man that's sleeping around with multiple women. Right! Read on. Nor idolaters, nor idolaters. Read that again, say that again. Nor idolaters. So if you got that Christian cross hanging in your windshield, hanging off your rearview mirror, you ain't gonna get the kingdom. Right. Because idolatry. If you got that crescent moon, you got the star David, you got these all these various things hanging in your wall and doing the false image of Christ, you will not get the kingdom of God. That's right. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.